Hello, everybody, and welcome to Theology 101. Today, we are going to talk about when the church began. To answer this question, we need to understand the role of the Holy Spirit regarding the church. Have you wondered what distinguishes believers in the Old Testament and New Testament? Their relationship with the Holy Spirit. Although the Holy Spirit was given to Old Testament believers, he did not completely indwell believers until the forming of the church. So when did the church begin? When did they receive the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit? Jesus gives a hint when he says this, And behold, I am sending forth the promise of my Father upon you, but you are to stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. What is this promise referring to? Jesus says that he will send forth the Holy Spirit to his disciples, so they must stay in Jerusalem until they receive the Spirit. At another time, during the Feast of Tabernacles, Jesus talked about how he will give living water to whoever believes in him. The Apostle John notes how Jesus was referring to the gift of the Holy Spirit. However, notice what the Apostle John comments. Now this he spoke of the Spirit, whom those who believed in him were to receive. For the Spirit was not yet given, because Jesus was not yet glorified. So we see that the gift of the Holy Spirit was not given to Jesus' disciples until he was glorified. In other words, it was not until after Jesus ascended back to heaven that the Holy Spirit was given to his disciples. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly there came from heaven like a violent rushing wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. And there appeared to them tongues as of fire distributing themselves, and they rested on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit was giving them utterance. This event, called Pentecost, took place 50 days after Jesus' death. Just as Jesus previously promised, he sent the Holy Spirit to his disciples to empower them to fulfill the Great Commission to make disciples of all nations. The evidence of the presence of the Holy Spirit is the gift of tongues or languages. During this time, there were Jews gathered in Jerusalem from all over the Roman Empire. This crowd came from different cultures and languages. So when they witnessed these uneducated disciples speak in their language, it caught their attention. The purpose of the gift of tongues was to allow the disciples to speak in different languages to spread the good news about Jesus' death and resurrection. The Apostle Peter takes this opportunity to explain what this crowd was witnessing. Therefore, having been exalted to the right hand of God, and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he has poured forth this which you both see and hear. So we see the birth of the church with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Now, the only people who has received the Holy Spirit during Pentecost were Jews. So the question is this, does God give the Holy Spirit to Gentiles? We see a very important event happen with Peter. He received a vision where a sheep from heaven brings down all types of unclean animals. God tells him to eat these animals, but as a Jew, Peter cannot get himself to do it. Three times, God tells him to eat these animals and says that what God has made clean, he should not call unclean. Now, what was the point of that vision? Keep in mind that one of the reasons for the dietary laws God gave to Israel was to differentiate them from other nations. He wanted them to abstain from food that could be associated with idols from other cultures. But now that God has told Peter that no animal should be considered unclean, what is God trying to communicate to Peter? We see the meaning of this vision when God sends Cornelius, a Gentile centurion, to Peter. Cornelius was a God-fearing man and God told him to go find Peter. When Cornelius meets Peter, Peter connects the dots with his vision and this meeting. And he said to them, You yourselves know how unlawful it is for a Jew to associate with or to visit anyone of another nation. But God has shown me that I should not call any person common or unclean. The reason God told Peter to not call any animal unclean is to say that no Gentiles should be considered unclean. Thus, Jesus' disciples should be inviting Gentiles or non-Jewish people to be a part of the church. So Peter shares the good news about Jesus to Cornelius. Then notice what happens. While Peter was still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit fell upon all those who were listening to the message. All the circumcised believers who came with Peter were amazed because the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out on the Gentiles also. For they were hearing them speaking with tongues and exalting God. Then Peter answered, Surely, no one can refuse the water for these to be baptized who have received the Holy Spirit just as we did, can he? So with the growth of the church, we not only see a new relationship between the Holy Spirit and God's people, 
but a new relationship between Jews and Gentiles. Jews were no longer to separate themselves from Gentiles, as evidenced with the dietary laws, but to form a new community which included Gentiles. Later, Peter goes to Jerusalem to report that he has witnessed God giving the Holy Spirit to Gentiles, which has never happened before. Then look at how the apostles respond. And as they began to speak, the Holy Spirit fell upon them just as he did upon us at the beginning. And I remember the word of the Lord, how he used to say, John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Therefore, if God gave to them the same gift as he gave to us also after believing in the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I that I could stand in God's way? When they heard this, they quieted down and glorified God, saying, Well then, God has granted to the Gentiles also the repentance that leads to life. Have you ever wondered how devout Jews were able to worship with Gentiles in the church? I'm sure it must have been difficult to suddenly associate with Gentiles, have meals with them, and call them spiritual siblings. How were the Jewish believers able to be united with Gentiles? It is because the Holy Spirit unites all believers with one another, despite their cultural, religious, and ethnic differences. Therefore, the Apostle Paul writes this, For even as the body is one, and yet has many members, and all the members of the body, though they are many, are one body, so also is Christ. For by one Spirit we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, whether slaves or free, we were all made to drink of one spirit. The church began at Pentecost, but it continues to grow even today by inviting people from all nations to be a part of the spiritual community. And despite all the differences we see within the church today, we can know that we are united as one people and one body because we all have the same Holy Spirit within us. Thank you to today's sponsor on Reverence. They offer a free digital worship music app called Maskill. If you want to find out more, I'll leave some links below in the description box. If you missed a previous video regarding the Holy Spirit's relationship with the church, I'll leave a link here for you to watch. Until next time, see you!